So that takes me to Will Smith's GQ article. And Will Smith's GQ article has kind of been, you know, in in the news cycle recently because, you know, people love the the the, the Smith family, the the Will and Jada Pinkett. Like we can just talk about them for days because they give us so much content. And I, I saw somebody talking about the about some of the clips that came from the article. And they're like, "Well, why is he talking about this? What does it add to our lives?" Well, after reading the article, I go, it actually adds a, a lot to our lives. It lets us know, like, Will was a people pleaser, and he struggled with that. And if you are a people pleaser and you struggle with that, I can relate that, you know, you're not going to be happy until you please yourself. No matter how many people you please, you're not going to be happy until you please yourself. Excuse me. So that was something I learned from the article, but also, like, uh, uh, you know, the T is what highlights those types of articles. But when you actually get in there and if you read the whole thing, you, you learn a lot of interesting things about um, Mr. Will Smith. And he gets into talking about his relationship, man. And like I say, these things are trial and error. You know, he gets to a point to his relationship where he's with his wife. He's with Jada Pinkett. But he's like, I want more. I want something different. Like. I mean, he talked about how he never really, like, had a real conversation with Tupac because of jealousy, because of, you know, his past with Jada. And I go, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, all the T and the T and the T and T, that makes sense. But I'm not really going to get into that because I want to have a more important conversation here. So. Don't I just use that so, so often to, like, transition back? So. <laughs> But at one point in his life, he wanted like a harem of 20 women. And he was working with a therapist and he was talking and they were talking about it. And she was like, well, who would you want in this harem? And then he starts naming names, Halle Berry being one. And I go, well, this man has class. He has taste. You, you marry Jada. You, you want your side piece to be Halle? Like, <laughs> you talk about a greedy motherfucker. <laughs> Like God, hey, Will, like <laughs> you want them all, don't you? I don't think at all. Yay, sex, well, feet tall. <laughs> Will look like white, look white like the wall. Yeah, no, nah, but he, yeah, he wanted a little piece of Hallie. And as they started to explore him wanting a harem of twenty women. And why he wanted that harem of twenty women, he like actually started to peel back the layers and realize. Bro, what I'm gonna do with 20 women? That sounds terrible. I got one. And now this is my words. I got one. I gotta make her happy. You, man, 20? 20? Ain't no way in hell y'all gonna be happy. So uh I can't even I couldn't even imagine trying to make that work. But it took him going down that road to actually exploring it to figure out that you didn't want it. And what I think is that so often we find ourselves in compromising positions in relationships because we have desires outside of our relationship and we don't really know if we want to go all the way on those desires. We just want to know, like, what is this? This thing is clicking here. It it's like makes me happy, I think. So I should try it. Right. But because I'm in this relationship, I can't do it. And. You know, sometimes relationships feel like jail. They feel like prison. Sometimes we become prisoners to our relationship and we no longer become advocates for ourselves, right? We put the we put the relationship overall, and that's what society tells us because you get married and it, it's what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. But what happens when I want something that you don't want or you want something that I don't want? Or we both want something that goes across the boundaries that we created in this relationship. Do we end it or do we explore it and then come back? Because, see, we got these feelings. These feelings. You know, all of those feelings where we think that 
once the person is doing things that we don't like and that's out of our control, they are disrespecting us. And it's like, well, are they disrespecting us or have they been disrespecting themselves by conforming to something that they're not comfortable with? And 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 Will gets into where he he did this like this documentary screening for Jada's 40th birthday party and she wasn't with it. They get into a huge argument. And <coughs> excuse me. The result of that argument is maybe we're not living our truth. Maybe we're living a false relationship because of our backgrounds, because of our upbringing, because it's it's what we think we need to do. You know, because Will talked about how he felt bad about having an eye for other women because of his Christian background. And, and it's like, well, I mean, that's normal. And then he talked about how well, Jada grew up differently and she didn't see like, you know, your typical nuclear home. So like what she wanted was different. So he had to be like, yo, OK, how do we make this relationship work? Because we obviously care about each other. But the way in which we're exhibiting it. Isn't best for us, because, again, we're letting society tell us how we're supposed to love each other and we're not loving each other the way that we want to.